Why are evolutionary biologists questioning how evolution works? Welcome to Answers News for Wednesday, July 6, 2022. Hey guys, I am Brian Osborne. That is Rob Webb on the end, Dr. Jennifer Rivera. And we're joined by a live studio audience. If you guys would clap and make yourselves known. There you go. All right. This is a good crowd. Good crowd. Good crowd. Millions Millions of people good out conversations, <laughs> pre-show. That's exactly right. Uh, so glad you're here. And we're going to dive into our first article, Do We Need a New Theory of Evolution? And so this is something that comes up quite often if you read these sort of scientific mm -hmm. journals, scientific articles. Looking at the theory, doesn't need to be revamped, discarded. And you'll see a lot of kind of infighting amongst the evolutionists. And so when you start off the article, they're going to tell us this for the uh, beginning. A new wave of scientists argues that mainstream evolutionary theory needs an urgent overhaul. And basically, as you're going through the article, they start off with this. Strange as it sounds, scientists still do not know the answer to some of the most basic questions about how life on Earth evolved. And they give this great illustration about supposedly how did eyes evolve, talk about some of the problems of eye evolution. And the general idea of coordinate evolution is that by generation by generation, with over unfathomably long periods of time, tiny advantages add up and make things like eyes. The problem is, according to multiple scientists, according to this particular article, this is absurdly crude and misleading. So they go through and try to explain how evolution maybe need to be redefined or revamped. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to see as you go through the article, it's a very long article, mm -hmm. uh, is that they're going to argue back and forth. And as they argue back and forth, it's interesting, they kind of disprove evolution along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throughout the whole article, like, like Brian was saying, it's a really long article. So just to save you guys some pain, let me just sum up real quick. Basically, you got all these different, um, what I would call evolutionary orthodox versus evolutionary progressive. So they're trying to come up with new theories, basically trying to hold on to that kind of natural selection basically being the driving force that Darwin was constantly slow, talking about. Slow and gradual change. Slow and gradual change, talking about things like plasticity and mutations and all these other maybe factors that are also putting into the evolution. But throughout the whole article, if you guys actually want to read it, basically what you'll see is just more evidence that this really is just a religion. It really is just a belief system because you see what happens when they start attacking that orthodoxy. They start getting angry. They start protesting. They start saying, how dare you, you know, kind of question this type of cultural belief that I've worked my entire life on, you know, and based on really their entire worldview on. It just reminds me of Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus was talking about, are you going to build your house on seeking sand or the solid rock, which is God's word. So you kind of see throughout, through and through, they're wondering why their house won't hold together, why everything keeps crumbling down really like a glass house, like we, like we have a great resource on, um, if you guys want to check that out, basically talking about how everything keeps crumbling down. They can't find the unity because it's on sinking sand. It's on that secular evolutionary worldview. And so you're seeing that basically um, kind of being played out throughout this whole article. And I, I would definitely say, you know, as technology improves and we understand more and more about how things are constructed and, and the design of ourselves and we're mapping out genomes of living things now right. and they're looking for ways to explain all this complexity that we see that could not possibly have been mm -hmm. random chance processes. And they even address in the article how they're almost like searching for this mathematical way to test biology. And they even say they're, you know, it's, it's very subjective in evolution because they have no statistical analysis. There's no way to measure this. Nothing's observable. And they actually address that in the article, how, how difficult it is. And they keep searching for this mechanism, you know, where they can actually have some solid data behind it, but there just isn't any. And, you know, they actually yeah. say that, well, it's a fairy tale that we may need to finally give up. And I'm thinking, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. It is. It's just nothing more than a story. It's not even a theory like they call it throughout all the way through and through a theory, but a theory requires evidence. So really, at best, we can call it an idea, mm -hmm. really. I mean, that's that's because that's all it is. And let's be clear. If you read the article, they're really dealing with the ideas of natural selection and mutations. And those things are real. And they cause variation within created kinds. It makes dogs mm -hmm. to make variations of other dogs. Cats make cats. So, so of course, variation, that's an observed fact, no doubt about that. But then can you actually deduce from natural selection and mutations, can you get from that to something called macroevolution, molecules to man evolution, fish to philosopher evolution, right? And it just doesn't work. Natural selection and mutations in the real world, they shuffle existing genetic information or mm -hmm. tend to lose it over time. They don't add brand new genetic information. And so this right. is what they're really struggling with to actually try to explain how you get from natural selection and mutations to molecules to man Darwinian evolution. That's what the fairy tale really is. That's what mm -hmm. it really is at its, at its core. And there is definitely a backlash 
So as you get these new scientists kind of raising these questions and questioning Darwin, many of the older scientists, I mean, they are ferocious as mm-hmm. they respond, right? They don't like it. And as Rob said, it's because they've built their career on this ideology. They've built their worldview on this ideology. One scientist laments, if this view of evolution isn't true, then my meaning to life is lost, right? Well, I'm kind of curious, if evolution is true, where does meaning come from anyway? You're just a natural accident over periods of time. That's mm-hmm. all you are. Mm-hmm. But it's their worldview. And then ultimately, if evolution isn't true, how do you explain where life came from? Well, mm-hmm. ultimately, it must come from a creator God, which in sinfulness, man does not want that. So they suppress the truth mm-hmm. in unrighteousness. Ultimately, it's a hard issue when you get down to the core of it. It really is a heart of the problem. It is the problem of the heart. And so you can find more on that online if you like. It's an interesting article, but uh, yeah, don't take an hour to read it. That's way too long, all right, as Rob did. (laughs) All right, now we've got a whole series of articles coming up that are dealing with abortion, as you might imagine, after the recent Roe v. Wade overturn. There's been a lot of stuff happening in this particular area of thinking. This first article here, Embrace Abortion as Killing to Prevent Forced Life, the Nation Writer Tells Pro-Choice Activists. And so Sophie Lewis, who writes this article, is arguing that uh, killing an unborn baby is justifiable, similar to self-defense. And the main thrust of the whole article, the the argument she's making in the article, is she's saying, listen, those pro-lifers, they have a strong argument. They keep talking about how abortion is murder, well, because it is, right? And so she's saying, in order to get around that argument, here's what we've got to do. We've got to embrace the fact that it is murder and say, we're okay with that because it's justified murder like self-defense. And we can say it's justified because it suits my desires and my convenience. Yeah. Yeah. You see that category area right there. They're trying to equate that. But ultimately, this is something we've been saying for many years now. It's not just about the evidence, right? It's not just about pointing out to the mother that that child, it really is a child, right? Because it says through and through, like, we need to be accepting of that to try to somehow uh, refute the pro-life argument by basically saying that, look, your child in the womb really is a, is, is a child. And so it just proves what Romans chapter one, at chapter 2 says in the Bible. It says that they have been given a conscience, right? They know right from wrong. They know their child. They know exactly what they're doing. And so they know that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood, yet they do it anyways in their rebellion against him. And so really, that's what we're kind of seeing throughout this article. Basically, they're saying that people's lives are more worth more than fetuses' lives. So essentially, they're saying that they are willing to accept the fact that they sacrifice their child at the convenience of the mother, basically saying that the happiness of the mother is more important than the life of that child. So we're seeing that through and through. And it really just exposes the issue with the, with the modern day pro-life movement today, basically saying, um, you know, we can leave the Bible out of it. We can leave, um, you know, all of the Christianity, all of the religion out of it. We can just focus on the science, focus on the embryology, basically show the mother that they are um, that, that the child in the womb truly is a child, but really what it comes down to is what's the pro-lifer going to say when the mother, when they encounter a mother like this, it says, yes, I know my child is a child. I know my baby is a baby, but I have the right to kill that child anyways. Are they going to keep, uh, are they going to keep pressing on that fact that trying to point them to say that, you know, let's, let's look at all these different scientific facts to show that your child really is, you know, um, made human life from conception, or are they going to open up their Bibles? Are they actually going to point the mother to God's word? Are they actually going to point the mother to the gospel? Because really that is the heart of the problem. It's the problem of the heart. A mother that says that I have the right to kill my child, she doesn't need more evidence. She needs a heart transformation. She needs a heart of stone to be transformed into a heart the flesh so she can desire the things God desires and hate what God hates. And that can only happen through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, and as shocking as this article was, I know when I first read through it, it almost, almost made me physically sick that people would honestly, I mean, I would say at least with their worldview to a certain point, they're being consistent as we were saying, because if, you know, if this is your worldview or trying to be, Mm -hmm. because even though they say, yes, we're willing to admit it's a life. Yes, it is murder of an unborn child, but what they actually say though in their quotes is we want to call it a proto person. Uh, they're still not saying yes, you know, that it's a fully a human life. They're trying to say, well, it's like a pre person, right? Yeah. It's, it's almost not human, but not quite step, not taking, right? but this mm-hmm. is like I say, one of the first articles I've really seen where they're at least admitting mm-hmm. that yes, we are committing murder. It actually says we're not idiots and we understand the stakes and sometimes that we choose death. Right? So at least they're being yeah. honest, yeah. Uh, I would say, for one of the first times. But 
And, I, and I've actually seen this firsthand. I usually go out to the abortion mills every month, so I see this nine times out of ten. The mothers that we're out there trying to help with, trying to counsel towards, they say to me every single time, they say, I know that child in the, in the womb, in my womb, is a human life, but I have the right to kill that child. And so that's why we always have to bring it back to the gospel. We bring it back to God's word to be able to, to fight against this. And, and even when they're calling it so-called pro the persons, mm -hmm. they're really just trying to disguise the truth that they already know exists. And it's so inconsistent because, as you said, they're calling it a proto person, not quite a person, not going that next step, the final step. And then also, if you just kind of applied this out logically, they would not be consistent, most likely. If you told them, okay, well, should you be able to kill your eight-month-old baby because of your convenience, because you don't want it anymore, because it's unwanted, it's not convenient, you should be able to kill it. I think most of them would say, no, right, because it's already born, eight months old, or about a toddler. Can you kill your toddler because you're annoyed by that and it's inconvenient? You don't want it anymore? Does that devalue the toddler? The answer would be no. And so they're being very inconsistent on their justification of the murder of that child, logically. Uh, but the reason is, as Rob already said, it is a heart issue. But here's, a, here's how the author wants to define life. I found this very interesting. The author said this, I don't want to live in a world that valorizes, gives value to life for its own sake. I want to live in a world that prioritizes the life that is chosen and wanted. And here's my question to her. What happens to her when she's not chosen or wanted? Can we kill her? What about a whole group of people? Think about Nazi Germany. These people, they're not really wanted anymore. They're not valued anymore. Can we kill a whole group of people? You see where this thinking goes, goes if you follow it through to its logical conclusion. Yeah. And again, as you so well said, Rob, ultimately this person and those like her need a heart transformation, yeah. which happens only through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then Christ. throughout this article, they always talk about how they have to have to be forced with this pregnancy, right? I was going to say, the forced they, they, life. They have to have the forced life. I'm like, has anyone living ever said, wow, I, I just hate my mother because she just forced me to live. Right. You think about uh, that you, it's just, yeah, it's just it ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically what it is is they always say like, you know, you're taking the choice away from these women. But mm -hmm. really what it is is they, they want the choice basically to escape the consequences of their choice in order to murder the child that doesn't have a choice for themselves. And that, that, that's what it comes down to. And let me just say this too. Sometimes we can look at an article like this and we think to ourselves, wow, those people man, look how, you know, not smart they are. It's so illogical. It's so unscientific. How can they be so wrong in their thinking? But bear in mind, according to them, from their perspective, they think they're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they've got a different foundation. You see, we're starting with God's word as our authority, build our thinking from there. So it's life from fertilization. We get that from God's word. It's the authority, build our thinking from there. For them, it's not God's word as the authority. It's man's ideas. That's their foundational authority. They're building their thinking from that foundation. It's yeah. the wrong foundation. Uh, we just did a video on Chris Evans, the guy who plays Captain America in the Marvel mm -hmm. movies, and he's the uh, voice actor for Buzz Lightyear in the new Lightyear movie. And Chris Evans actually calls people who believe the Bible and believe in biblical sexuality and biblical gender roles, he calls them idiots. Now, he's on video. You can go watch the video. Mm -hmm. He calls them idiots, and they're going to die off like the dinosaurs because in his thinking, he has the moral high ground rooted in his foundational authority, which is man's ideas. So bear in mind, these people, they're not dumb, but they have the wrong foundation that gives mm -hmm. them the wrong conclusions. And for that whole edifice of their thinking to change, their foundation needs to change yeah. from man's word to God. That only happens through the gospel of Jesus like Christ. The, like the Apostle Paul says, they need to have their mind transformed, right? right? Because of sin, their mind is broken. Their thinking is broken. They need to have the mind of Christ, which can only happen through the gospel. I would say we need to pray for Sophie Lewis, the author of Absolutely. this article, because yeah. you know, she's yeah. just in a very dark place. Yes. And I just think if we're going to yes. uplift someone in prayer this week, let's uplift her. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good point. For sure. It's, uh, continuing on the uh, abortion train here of articles, we hear have her from the Daily Wire headline, here are the woke businesses vowing to cover travel costs for employees, abortion, tourism. So what this is, it's a list of companies who are saying, hey, listen, you know what, since we have this new ruling where Roe v. Wade has been overturned, now abortion will be legalized or illegal, basically state by state. And so if you're in a state that does not allow for abortions and you want an abortion, these companies are saying, we will pay your travel expenses, in many cases up to four, six, even $10,000 to go get that abortion in a pro-abortion state. And so this kind of reminds me, if you remember the movie Jurassic Park, that famous phrase, life finds a way. This is death finds a way. They're going to find a way to murder these babies if they don't want them. And so they list many different uh, corporations. And I mean, the list just grows and grows. But they list Dick's. They list Disney. They list, uh, let's see here, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Levi, 
Tesla, Amazon, Starbucks, Citigroup, Yelp, Apple, Match, Bumble, saw another one for Netflix in another article, and the list keeps growing and growing. Yeah. Yeah, that's just some of them. They don't even list all of them. And it's just, you're seeing that more and more. It just reminds me of Proverbs chapter 8. Those that hate God ultimately love death. And like Brian was saying, they're going to find a way for that death to go through. And, you know, all, all the way through and through, they keep talking about these companies want to just support the woman's health care, the, the woman's reproductive rights. But that reminds me of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, which says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, substitute light for darkness, darkness for light, sweet for bitter, bitter for sweet. So I just think about, translate that to this situation, woe to those companies who call health care the murder of innocent children. Right. Woe to those who call the reproductive rights of women the slaughtering of the innocent by the thousands every single day. Woe to those. So we, we, uh, like, like Jennifer was saying, we need to make sure that we're continuing to pray for these, um, you know, all, all of these companies, all of the CEOs, everyone that's on the board making these decisions, that they would turn away from this wickedness. They would turn back to God's word and what God's word actually says, that all children from the moment of fertilization they are made in the image of God. They're fearfully and wonderfully made and that they are blessings from God. They're not, a, they're not a consequence. They're not a burden like the culture says. They are blessings. They're like arrows in the hands of a warrior. So as a father, what warrior doesn't want, want to go to battle with more arrows in his quiver? And that's what the Bible says that children are. We need to be um, basically realigning our thinking, not according to the culture, but according to what God's word says. And that is our foundation for all of this. And then, what's interesting is they're not, a lot of these companies are not just limiting it to abortion. They're also allowing them to travel for, as we oh, say, yeah. gender confirming, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. s support and surgeries yeah. and things like that and, and other things that fall within that. We see that social justice movement right That's now. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, we were all talking. It's like, well, doesn't this open a door, though? for, I would say, definitely some problems for people who may say, oh, wow, I can get $10,000 to go to California. Yeah. You know, maybe I Absolutely. need some type of, you well, know. not California, but. Oh, maybe yeah. Florida, right? We were <laughs> yeah. saying, but what an opportunity for people Somewhere to abuse this system, <laughs> too, because you're just, I mean, I don't know what you have to apply for to even, right. you know, get these funds. Yeah. But I just can't imagine that people won't be taking advantage of this situation as well, using taxpayer money, basically, right. to go you know, commit murder or who knows what else. And like you were saying, Brian, well, maybe you need another type of surgery. And, right. you well, know, you well, feel like you need funds to go somewhere. By right? secular thinking, what is, <clears throat> what is the baby in the womb? Just a glob of tissue. Right, That's all they right, think it yeah. is, right? And so, hey, if they want to remove their glob of tissue by their own thinking, then I've got globs of tissue. I've got moles that need to be removed, right? So there's a great person, there's a great doctor maybe in Florida in the panhandle where they have nice white beaches and, mm -hmm. you know, and blue waters Little resort that can the remove ocean, the mole for me there. So if you can pay me $6,000 to go <laughs> to that doctor for a week, of course, and at the end of the week, have that mold you, removed. You need to recover. And, you know, I got to recover right, as well, right? right? You yeah. need that, you know. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, you can see how they could definitely you twist You see that, that. inconsistency yeah, all yeah. the way through and through. So I think the title got it right when it said tourism, because that's really what it is. And it's, Yes, yeah. exactly. And then continue on the woke train. Next article related to the abortion issue. GOP lawmakers sound off on Biden administration directing teen mothers to abortion. Shame on you, Mr. President, said multiple uh, officials. And so basically what this is, is the Biden administration is sending uh, teen mothers, even minors, 15 years and younger, sending them to uh, websites where they can go to the websites. Uh, one in particular they mentioned, I'll turn it over to Jennifer here in a second to talk about it, but abortionfinder.org. And they can go to abortionfinder.org, plug in near their age, their condition, and they'll find different places they can go get an abortion. And even give them instructions about how to get around the parental laws in that particular state so you don't have to tell your parents, even if you're under 16 years of age, about your abortion. And this is mm -hmm. our... Uh, administration of the presidency pushing this ideology. But you did some research on this. Tell us about I that. I did. So I yeah. said, well, let me go check out, you know, what happens if I tell abortionfinder.org that I'm under 15. So I went on there putting a fake name and I put that I was under 15 because I wanted to see, you know, what kind of information it would give me. Investigative I, reporting. I was. Yeah, I, I said, well, really I, good you know, journalism. I had to state, you know, I was, <laughs> I was seeking an abortion and all this. And so it was interesting. The first page that comes up, you know, gives me the Kentucky law and says it's still legal in Kentucky, but they actually said the situation's changed rapidly. So they're definitely giving me pressure. You only have so much time. So abort right? now. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, yeah. Kentucky may change that law at any moment. You better go get it. And then it actually gave me a whole list of, you know, clinics near me based on my zip code 
where I could go find services. But the fact I was under 15, it said, oh, well, you're going to need parental consent. But it then put me in contact with the judicial by bypass contact the helpline, which you can link through there. And it says on there, you can get an order from a judge that lets you get an abortion um, if you're under age, if you're under 18. So it actually puts you directly onto a site where you can request more information, mm -hmm. uh, where they can put you in touch mm -hmm. with the legal system to help you circumvent your parents uh, so that you can still get that abortion. Uh, and I would say that that's the focus of this article is just mm -hmm. the continuing, what we say is stripping of parental rights. That's right, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and just so, I mean, if, if it wasn't worse enough to be able to have your child kill their child, but they're actually going around the parental authority as well, but um, just while, real quick, and then I'll hand it back over to you guys, just while we're on the topic of lawmakers, really, in this post row world right now that we're living in, um, it's very important right now more than ever that our lawmakers continue to push for bills that actually abolish and actually, um, like they were saying, right now in Kentucky, um, it's not quite codified yet, you know, they're still trying to fight all these legal battles, but if you you're living in the state right now, I'd really encourage you guys, as, as a citizen of the republic, make sure you're, you're, you're seeing what your lawmakers are actually doing. Are your lawmakers actually proposing bills of abolition that actually ends, and not only end, but also criminalize abortion? Are they treating abortion the same way they would, for, for example, homicide? Are they treating it like they should as for murder? Are they providing equal protection, like Brian was saying, for maybe the eight-month-old, the two-year-old, the five-year-old, as the child in the womb? You know, Because if you think about it, if we're, if we're treating, you know, let's say a mother kills her two-year-old, right, they get this certain penalty, but if a mother kills her child in the womb, they're giving a different penalty that shows the inconsistency whether or not we actually believe that the child in the womb is just as valuable and has just as much dignity as the child outside the womb. So I, I just really encourage you guys to make sure that you look into whatever laws that your state is putting into right now. Make sure you're calling your lawmakers to repentance to go back to God's word, back to God's law. And it just reminds me of Proverbs 24 here. Starting in verse 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, behold, we do not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And he will not repay man according to his work. It is our job as the church, as Christians, we are to rescue those being led away to slaughter. Absolutely. And that leads us right into our last article for this uh, section on abortion there in our show here. Uh, Patagonia, which by the way, evidently I'm old because I never shopped there before in my entire life. I'd never seen that word before, but Patagonia offers to bail out employees who peacefully protest for abortion. So this is a clothing store, I believe. Uh, anyway, this clothing store is offering not only to pay for your trip to get an abortion, but hey, if you're peacefully protesting, whatever they mean by that, and you get thrown in jail because you're a peaceful protest against the new overturning of Roe v. Wade, they will actually pay to bail you out. They're going to pay you to embrace their worldview. And in this one article, I said they go on, on, on about all these things they're going to offer. And there's one little line that I, I, I underlined because it said, Oh, but if you choose to be a new parent, yeah. right, if you decide to keep your baby, then we yeah. will give, you know, there are some incentives for, you know, breastfeeding space, child care support, mm -hmm. it says. And so they do have one little sentence where they say, oh, mm -hmm. well, we're also offering this. But the entire article is just about what they're going to give you if you decide to abort. I want to go get trained on how to yeah. be a reproductive justice, which is their um, terminology they yeah. like to use for their this. Their semantics. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing just gave me whiplash. I was like reading through it, and all of a sudden the inconsistency. They say Patagonia has long supported abortion care, working parents and families, and will continue to do so. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on just a second. Hold the phone. Abortion care families, those two don't match. It's like ketchup on brats. You know, those things don't, don't go together. I just had brats recently, so that's why I'm thinking about it. Don't ever put ketchup on brats. It's mustard on brats, by the way. Um, <laughs> all the Wisconsin people are probably like, yes, amen. Yeah, very but you know what is fascinating in this article? How many times they yeah. use the word woman? I yeah. thought All that was interesting. You know what a woman is. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, look they, at that. they, That's a good they point. were yeah. aware of what yeah. a woman is. It's right. a woman who is pregnant. When it's convenient for their arguments, right. they know what a woman is. Then they'll is. use the right term. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on away from abortion, praise yep. God. All right, here we go. Here we go. A near-perfect 30,000-year-old baby woolly mammoth discovered in Yukon's Klondike Goldfields. This is over in Canada. So, of course, it's not 30,000 years old. The Earth and the universe is only roughly around 6,000 years of age. But this is probably a post-flood ice age remnant, something buried in that particular time, buried rapidly. To get a fossil, you need to bury something quickly. And it's an amazing find, a mostly complete mammoth, biggest, uh, best discovery in North, uh, North America. And it's so intense that still has intact tail no, uh, toenails, 
hide, hair, a trunk, even the intestines, even there's some of the uh, food that it ate still in the intestines. You can tell what it ate. And so you know it's not that old, number After one. 30,000 right? years, yeah, yeah, all those things. It wouldn't last for 30,000 yeah. years, and it's an amazing mm-hmm. find. Yeah. yeah, and then I think, Jennifer, you, you had some interesting things to, well, to yeah, talk about. Well, yeah, I was going to talk about when, uh, they, when they found the Iceman in the Alps. So it's mm-hmm. probably a little over 10 years ago, and he was the most intact human specimen that we've ever found frozen. Right. Uh, of course, we recognize it would be post-flood, uh, but he was, you know, they, for a long time, they believed he was accidentally frozen, but then later on, they did um, some x-rays and found out, oh, that he actually had an arrow in his back, so they do believe it was a, more like a, we would say, homicide. So as a forensic, forensic scientist, science. I was yeah, really exactly. interested by this, <laughs> yeah. but he jam. also had had eaten within a uh, time frame of his death, and because of the contents, they were actually able to extract the pollen from that food uh, that were, it was out through his intestinal tract and actually trace his steps uh, from the top of the mountains down into a valley and back out just three days before his death. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Yeah, so the first is. thing I thought of was, well, we could analyze what was in this woolly mammoth's stomach and probably maybe track its movements mm-hmm. uh, not long before it was rapidly frozen. So it's pretty I mean, interesting. Just, just, just the whole time I kept reading this, were you guys thinking about the clones? Ice cream bar. Like, what would you do? <laughs> I, I am now. Thank you. Bar. I, I just kept thinking about that over and over again. You're and, welcome to the audience. Right. And it was in Yukon, Canada. I'm like, where's Avery and Patricia? Where's our Canadians when we needed to talk about this the whole time? So, uh, yeah. I mean, overall, just this this makes sense in the biblical worldview, of course. Now, we're, we're, we're talking about that post flood kind of Ice Age type of era. If you guys would like to know more about the Ice Age, about what happened, you know, in terms of some of the woolly mammoths, when did they actually go extinct? We have a really a lot of good resources on our website. Yep. Um, a, a lot of good books, a lot of good um, resources in general. If you guys just go on, on our website, just search Ice Age or Woolly Mammoths, you'll be able to spend millions of years on our website. There you go. And so. that's AnswersInGenesis.org. And again, a lot of the articles and videos are free. And mm-hmm. then, of course, you can purchase books on the Ice Age as well. Either way you want, it's all yeah. there. And Answers.tv will have that stuff as yeah. well. There you go. Yep. All right, next article, two genes crucial for plants colonizing the earth 470 million years ago have been identified. Now, if they're colonizing the earth, isn't that bad according to social justice oh, and true. critical race theory? Right. So you've got to get rid of the plants. You need racial equity for all plants. But anyway, yeah. so no, what it is, the whole article is talking. It's really, you, can, you could start it off like this, once upon a time. Yep. Right? Yep. It's, it's a big story. So plants are amazing. They're amazingly diverse. How did they get here? How did they evolve into existence? How did they co- overcome obstacles according to evolutionary thinking? That's all guesswork based on the evolutionary idea and their minds and their worldview. So they're trying to figure out how plants evolved. Big problem for evolutionists. And so in their thinking, plants had to overcome the problem of dealing with fungi on the earth. And so they needed a way to protect themselves from that. How did they do that? Well, they think they keyed in on two particular genes that may have been helpful to help plants make the transition from water to land and battle against the fungi. And so there are indeed two genes that help plants resist fungi in bad ways so they can thrive. But those two genes are part of God's amazing created design. And that's just good observational science. Right? That's yeah. good observational science, right? So, so yeah. we have good observational science. There is some solid science in here mixed in with a whole lot of stories. Storytelling. Oh, yeah. Yep. A I lot mean, of it. fungi and plants are in two different kingdoms. They have distinct, different characteristics. That's why they're categorized differently. God mm-hmm. created them to reproduce within their created kinds, which mm-hmm. is exactly what they observe, you know, we observe when we study them. And so they're just always trying to find that transition. How did these aquatic plants become land plants? Oh, well, there must have been this transfer of information. And it's all, like you but said, where did the infra- information just, come from right, originally? Exactly. Yeah, they still don't right. answer that question. Right. Yeah. But the fact that plants were created with this, like, plug that helps them resist this fungi that could right. be destructive to them is just another amazing you know, just piece the, of evidence that we have that we have a creator God who put these things in place. Yeah, just, so. And just the dumb luck of evolution, right? Yeah. To be yeah. able to have that. So, I mean, it just through and through, it just shows the foolishness, just the absurdity of the whole um, evolutionary naturalistic worldview. But it actually, like Jennifer was saying, it just shows the creative works of our awesome God through and through. And so it just, just praise God for that. And, you know, all the, all the immense diversity and information that he programmed into these plants. And, and of course, like we say all the time on the show, just make sure when you're reading articles like this, separate the fact from the fiction, you know, from the actual observational science, from just the storytelling, because it's all the way through and through. They try to mix it in together, but just make sure you put on those biblical glasses and really be able to see what's the truth, what's, what's the interpretation, what's the evidence that they're trying to spin. And a lot of times people think like the issue of origins, evolution versus creation, that it's a battle over evidence, right? So you got the creationists over here, they're trying to get their pile of evidence and the evolutionists are trying to get their pile of evidence and whoever gets the biggest pile, they win. But guys, that's not the actual battle. Uh, bear in mind, as Rob was saying, 
all scientists, all people have the same evidence, the same DNA, the same observations in the present, the same radioisotopes, the same rock layers, and the same fossils. All that stuff exists in the present and must be interpreted with assumptions, a worldview about the past, and wrong assumptions, wrong conclusions. And so right. your worldview is paramount in how you understand what you see in the present. And so foundationally, it's an authority issue. It's a worldview issue. We want to start with God's word, not man's, on all these things. That's what we always teach to kids in our educational programs here is we don't need evidence to prove the Bible's true. We don't mm -hmm. need that, right? God's word is sufficient in and mm -hmm. of itself. That's right. But we can study science and see how it directly confirms what that's God's right. word sells us. And that's what's yeah. so amazing about science. Yeah. And we, we also have a few resources on display here. We have the lie, which is essentially, other than the Bible, it's kind of our, our textbook mm -hmm. really for the ministry, of course. It's basically exposing why we can't take evolution, millions of years, all of these secular ideas, and try to fit them into the Bible, basically reinterpreting, compromising on the word of God, on Genesis, like Brian was saying, you know, it's those worldviews that we all have the same evidence, but how are we interpreting that evidence? Are we using God's infallible word that doesn't change, or are we using the fallible opinions of man that seems to change every single week, right? Every single week we're up here on the Answers News, again and again we're seeing, oh, the evolutionary story is changing again, changing again. But what doesn't change? It's God's word, That's God's right. word alone. And we also have Fearfully Wonderfully Made, so if you wanted more information on when well, we say life from the moment of fertilization, this is an excellent DVD by well, Dr. Uh, David Men, yeah, who also yeah. inspired our Fearfully Wonderfully Made exhibit mm -hmm. uh, out in the lobby. Yeah. And then if you want to find those on the internet, you can go to answers.tv. That's our own streaming platform. You can actually sign up for it there, get a seven day free trial. And then it's an amazing resource, over 5,000 videos on that particular platform. Only 40 bucks for the annual subscription, which yeah. is a wonderful deal. And you can deal. gift it as well. You can, you can, you can gift, gift it, it directly as well. From Absolutely. The it's such mm -hmm. a great resource. So all the videos are on there. Shows like Answers News are streamed on answers.tv. Conferences are streamed later on. Great resource. And I also encourage you to check out our magazine. So much like this show is kind of a current addressing of the issues of our culture today. The magazine is similar to that. It deals with these issues on a current level. What's happening relatively recently, they're addressed in the magazine from a biblical worldview perspective, roughly 70 some pages long, good meat in the magazine. There's a separate kids magazine in the magazine, whole different deal for the kids. I think roughly 30 yeah, pages Yeah, the kids now. magazine's great. My it's kids awesome, absolutely right? love them. It really yeah, is they're wonderful. Awesome. And so you can sign up for that online or here at the museum. When you do sign up, you get the digital version of the magazine with the subscription. You can actually listen to all the articles. If you don't like to read, they'll read them for you on the digital, which is really nice, all right? Yeah. That's all part of the subscription. If you're here at the museum, you get a free mug when you sign up, which is always That's awesome. fun, right? Yeah. It is. Can't beat that. And so, so much more. Check out our website if you want to dive deep on any of these things, but we're so glad you've been with us here for today. Until next time, keep standing on God's word, defending the faith, and proclaiming the gospel. We'll see you guys. God bless.